How are you? Welcome to the second episode of Lena and Rada's show. So it's 4.30 p.m. in Melbourne time. Uh, can you hear us, guys? Please press a thumb to let us know. Let's check. Let me check here what Good. comments do we have. Give us some thumbs up, guys. Good. Okay. Can you hear us, everyone? Welcome for those who joined us. We can see some people online. Yes, we already have 13 people here with us. We would like to know if you guys can hear us properly. Hi, Dr. Depeche. <laughs> hey, Dr. Depeche, how are you? Yes, okay, we have sound, which is very good. Hi, Kirti, how are you? Great to have you. All right. Okay, so... hey, Benita, how are you? Okay, so definitely you guys can hear us. We are just going to wait for more people to join the, the Facebook Live. So in the meantime, how was your weekend, Rada? Very good. Um, I was here at Dental 101. Um, we were giving uh, some demos and assessing candidates here. I can tell you that they have done a lot of improvement. That's really, good. Really, I'm very proud of them. Oh, yes, of course, because we already have the course for the part two yeah, going there. Exactly. Yeah. So you were here on Saturday. Yes, cool. exactly. And how was your weekend? Well, I spent my weekend actually here as well. So you were here on Saturday. I yes. was here on Sunday and Monday. Uh, yeah. We were teaching the dental assistant intensive course, which was quite nice. People was happy. And hopefully the people that want to go down the path of dental assistant, the course will help them a lot. Yeah. Right. So it was it was quite fun actually. Okay. And um, I heard you had like mock interviews. Yes, in uh, during the course. Yes. The idea is that they are they can be prepared mm -hmm. to face an interview. So that oh, was right. part of the course. So towards the end we had like a simulated role interview with them, play, like yes. a role play, and we asked them some questions so they can be prepared to go, you know, around and look for some jobs. Because you know that when you recently moved to another city, another country, it's not easy, you know, to yes, get the first exactly. interview, the first questions, and especially if your first language is not English, you yes, know? So sometimes exactly. you feel a little bit uh, afraid about that, yeah. but we did quite quite fun things during I'm the course. I'm sure it's very helpful. Yeah, yeah, it's great, true. great. All right, we have Sastina. Hello, Sastina, Hi. how are you? So Sastina and Prem, how are you? Uh, Vinita. And Sastina has tagged uh, quite a bit of people. Deepika, Kalpana, and Pant. Yes, guys, come and join us, definitely. Because for today, what do we have for today, Rada? So today we are going to uh, talk about self-assessment. So how we can assess ourselves during this time where um, we cannot go to a coaching center, for instance. And... Uh, we can use this as well anytime, anyway, because it's important that when we are practicing home, we can assess ourselves to know if we are doing right or wrong. Correct. So today we are going to do a, an example of restoration and we have chosen amalgam. Yes, correct. If I don't remember, if I remember correctly, we have done uh, videos about discussing the criteria for different tasks. Yeah. So probably guys, if you want to know a little bit more about how to discuss the criteria and how to assess the criteria, probably in the Facebook page of Dental 101, you can go and look for Rada and I with some videos about uh, criteria. Exactly. And today, yes, we are going to assess uh, an amalgam that yeah. we have chosen especially for you guys. <laughs> Definitely. So the idea is that you guys can do um, a lot of um, self-assessment at home. You can ask questions, same as the other uh, episode that we had. I think uh, feel free to ask and interrupt us at any time. Hello, Jessica, my Colombian friend. Hi, Jessica. Hello, Hello Juan. Juan. And 
we have someone else and maybe. let's see Sastina. Sastina yes we are doing good thanks yes yes so we have I have my Colombian fan club here yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um, we can just uh, talk about uh, we can go through uh, the criteria era, yeah, yeah probably briefly and then we are, uh, we talk about what you need to self-assess your uh, I mean to self-assess yeah and then we will uh, uh, give you an example of a, um, an amalgam that we have chosen with some mistakes of course so we can um, show you uh, how to to go through that definitely and I think as a message to take home today guys when you make mistakes and when you face problems, when you are practicing at home, that's actually quite good for you because then you learn how to avoid them in the future or if they are fixable, you can learn how to fix them. Exactly. So don't, don't get frustrated, you know, when you get troubles at home, when, you, when the amalgam just fall and when you don't get the contact, that's all, that's all okay, that's part of the process. And actually I find that more valuable that for you guys to do a task perfect every single time because you never know what can happen during the exam. You are going to exactly. face problems. You are going to make mistakes. It's pretty much the same. So I, I think it's actually more valuable, you know, to make mistakes and exactly. learn how to fix them and how to spot them. That's also quite important. And yeah, as uh, Lina said, it, this is very important because why? For instance, I can, I can give you um, an example of a friend who was just outstanding in technical task and uh, so amalgam is, was like just, uh, he could do it blindly. Oh. Day of exam, he uh, had uh, one of the proximal part fractured and uh, going away. Oh. So if even the best of us, True. You, you don't know what could happen and True. you need to know how to fix uh, yeah. and solve your problem because you know, with the amount of stress this day, the, the, the exam day, you, you need to keep your calm, your cool. Okay, I've done it home. Yeah. I know how to manage it. Easy and, peasy. And you don't panic. You don't panic. Correct. And then you can fix it and keep your calm yes. and move true. on with the other true, task true. if it's not the last one. That's, that's such a good testimony, actually, because yes. I cannot even imagine when you face a problem that you are facing for the first time during the exam. That must be very, very stressful. So again, guys, don't get frustrated, make mistakes, learn how to fix them, and hopefully the day of the exam, you are not going to be in, under any kind of pressure because you are prepared for everything. Yes. That's the goal. Okay, we have Charu Bansal Hi. here. It's setting. how Hi, are Charu. you? Lina and Rada, we are very good. Very good. Thank happy you so to much. Happy to today. Yes. Very happy to, to share with you again. Definitely. Okay, Doc Rada, let's talk about our rubric. Remember, guys, like your Bible. Yeah. You should have it in your mind, you know, and yeah, pretty much like you that one. You need to get this exactly with you after All the finishing your task. True. You sit and then you start going through each criteria one by one and genuinely and honestly assess yourself. Don't lie on yourself. Don't think, okay, it's, we don't care about what people could think. It's just you between you and your task. No one is going to criticize you. We don't care about that. Just be honest with yourself and think, okay, no, in this one, I'm borderline. And this is how you can progress. True. It's not when you say, oh, yeah, it's okay. And like, because you you don't um, admit or you don't challenge you yourself. So try to this be will help you. on very good every time you do your task. I understand we cannot be perfect, but remember that during the exam, you are not going to be measured against yourself. You are going to be measured against the people in your batch. Exactly. So if you are the very best of your batch, you are going to pass no matter what. So what you need to do is to practice to be very good, not, not to practice to be borderline, because mm. that's a dangerous place to be in. Exactly. And we don't want to be in that place. Correct. We want to be on the top. All right. So um, what do you need uh, when you are going to assess yourself in 
basically on all the restoration tasks. Uh, but today we are going, as I said, uh, to uh, talk about amalgam tasks. So you need, of course, your mirror, a sharp probe, and a floss. Important. Okay. So once you got your criteria ready, your uh, material or instruments ready, then you take your uh, jaw and then you go through the uh, criteria one by one with your uh, tooth restoration. Maybe we can start showing and go through the criteria yes. one by one. Yes, we have chosen an amalgam today that is quite effective yes. because that one can show us different mistakes that we can make. Mm. So it is quite important because if we show you guys a perfect amalgam, that's not going to help you actually. But if we show you how are the defects the tricky things that you can face probably that can help you guys a little bit better mm -hmm. so bear with us we will try to zoom the resolution that we want to show you guys hopefully you can uh, tell us in the comments if you are seeing properly and if you are actually gaining something when we focus on the on the little restoration that we have here and i want to add just interact with us feel free to ask us any question and really we're happy to to answer that so let's go. Okay, let's try to do this, guys. So we have a 2-7. I know, don't panic. Probably the first question is like, are we going to get a restoration for amalgam in a 2-7? We don't know. Anything can happen. Can Historically, we have had first molars, upper first molars, first upper premolars, and lower molars. That's okay. For today, just as an example, we have the 2-7 with the mesiobocal cusp missing that we need to rebuild with our amalgam. So don't stress, it's just as a matter of example. So, okay guys, let's try to focus on our amalgam here. Hi Ilham, how are you? Hey dear? Ilham! Happy to have you with us. Oh yes, you are miss around here Ilham. Oh yes. Come back and visit us. <laughs> All right, so the first criteria is restoration. It's about smoothness so uh, this you will assess it visually you can take your probe but mainly visually you can assess if your restoration is rough or not so here we also have obviously a little bit of lack between the video and what we are talking so don't stress Bear with about, us. exactly you are going to Please. be able to see so okay Rada First point of the criteria is the optimal smoothness. So here I would say that we see some bright part here and yeah if you look to the it doesn't seem that bad to be yes. honest. So in terms of a smoothness I will say Good. I mean, yeah, it could be satisfactory, yes. yes. Because we can see a bit of roughness here and here. As smooth as we can go, you know, with an amalgam. We know that amalgam is not going to be the most shiny and smooth thing, but uh, ideally you shouldn't be catching any kind of uh, rough surfaces when you have your, your amalgam. Exactly. Here. So for the second criteria, we have porosities. So the material handling here is about if there is any voids, any cleft, uh, and if it's impairing the restoration integrity. So um, here, here we can see it's not voids, but if it's catching a bit here, I would say that it's more about excess. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's not as bad. Obviously, yes. on the distal, I don't know if you guys can appreciate it well on camera, but on the distal, we have a different defect, which is not a void. Void is when you uh, spot like bubbles inside of the yes. amalgam, which like basically are the result here. of bad condensation. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that we don't want. So this one so far for restoration finish and material handling will be something okay. satisfactory. Yes. The third point of the criteria is about amalgam debris, mm. which also we don't see here. 
but remember that you create a lot of debris when you are doing amalgam, mm. especially when you are carving. So the idea is that you manage your time well enough for you to be um, able to clean everything after you finish your restoration. Okay? This amalgam was made several days ago, probably. That's why we don't have any debris in here. So make sure that you use the spray with the, the air and the water. Um, and you really clean your jaw upper and lower and also be careful to not have any debris inside your endo cavity or your true. caries or affecting your composite true true or, or any restoration i mean that's or, true or especially the, the temporary crown exactly that is very porous catch, yeah it catch everything so make sure everything is clean because this again is easy point Exactly. You, you, you can get very good easily in this one. Exactly. True. Okay, now things are going to get more interesting. We are going to restoration integrity, which is the fourth point of the criteria. And if you guys, by any chance at home, have the criteria, uh, you will see Jessica is saying that it's a defect in the tooth restoration junction in the distal part. And that's exactly. correct, Jessica. But what is happening there is not a defect is a um, restoration integrity issue mm. the criteria says that you are going to be in very good if your restoration is intact there's no satisfactory and there's no borderline it's yes or no it's yes or no and then you are going to fall immediately in unsatisfactory which means that the restoration is fractured or completely missing yes. so as jessica just point in in her comment Yes, what we have here is a restoration integrity issue. So straight away, this is unsatisfactory mm. because definitely there's no, and with amalgam, we cannot come back from there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. So that one has obviously a, a part that is fractured, immediately unsatisfactory for the person that's doing that amalgam. And I would like to add that it will affect not only this criteria, but also the criteria about the junk, the contact area, the contact point. Correct. So because it will affect your contact area, your marginal ridge as well. So the it affects tooth restoration the junction. Tooth restoration junction. So many criteria will be affected by this um, this, this fracture. Yeah, correct. And again, that uh, restoration integrity criteria that you have there is yes or no. Exactly, it's yes or no. And it me it's mentioned here, fracture, loose or missing. Guys, remember, you are going to get a cavity like the one that I'm going to show you now. Cavity, pretty similar to the one that you are going to get in the exam, which is completely smooth with no retention grooves. Mm. Remember, the first thing that you need to do is to do your retention groups. That's mm. quite important. Otherwise, it happens a lot Hello. that when you are flossing and you are polishing, straight away you lose your restoration. That's what that means about restoration integrity, loose or missing. So the cavity that you are seeing right now is pretty much what you are going to get during the exam. Exactly. And make sure that you do the, the groups because sometimes we are just so focused on mm -hmm. go ahead and do our task that we forget that quite important thing. Yeah, and it could be quite fatal to your, uh, oh, yes. your task. Because yes, because if you lose it, it's... Yeah. You have to start all over again if you have the time. If you have the time. Correct. And plus, as we said, we have to manage the stress on top of the time and True. all that. Now... Uh, so the tooth restoration junction, so you have to go with your probe everywhere to see if there is uh, any catch, if it's well, we have a smooth junction Correct. everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Jessica is also pointing out um, complementing what we just say about the other point of the criteria that are going to be affected by that defect on the distal and yes Jessica the marginal ridge obviously is going to be below the adjacent tooth and that's going to be another part of the criteria that's going to be affected so you guys can see how minor mistakes or something that we consider minor affect immediately pretty much 
a lot of points of the criteria. So well done, Jessica. Very proud of you. This Colombian people is just so amazing, huh, Rada? <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so now over Hanks. Oh, I just uh, before going to this criteria, uh, if you have a book or will you keep it for later? Okay, let's keep it for later. <laughs> suspense. Okay, a little bit of suspense. Okay, guys, overhangs. Overhangs, mainly it's about this proximal area here, here, if you have excess of material. So when you have overhangs, as I always say to the candidates here at Dental 101, we have to think about the clinical um, uh, outcome and why we are doing this. Correct. The, 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 the. So when we have overhangs, what we don't want is uh, a secondary caries Correct. with the catching of the plaque. Perio problem. Perio problem. Mm. If we are lucky, gingivitis, but could uh, uh, lead to a periodontitis, local periodontitis, which we don't want. Localized bone loss, yes. What Rada just said is so important, guys. I mean, when we are so focused on the technicality of the task, mm -hmm. we forget that what we need to keep in mind is that someday we are going to perform this kind of task in a patient. Exactly. And the examiners wants to see that you understood. You, exactly. You yeah. understand the importance of not leaving overhangs. Yeah. So immediately when you see it and you think, oh, it's not that noticeable, it's not that important. No, it is. Because in the long run, it's going to jeopardize the outcome of your restoration and even the stability of the tooth. Exactly. So when uh, they are uh, adding this uh, criteria, they talk about the floss. So you can see that you need the floss and check whether it's um, passing well or not. And uh, if we have the floss that is... So yes, with the overhangs, the floss, visual inspection can help you know if you have overhangs and also the floss. In this case, the floss is shredding. Probably doesn't mean exactly that we have an overhang, but something is it's happening like there. Yeah. Okay. And that's quite tight on the missile, as Rada just showed you guys. And um, another thing important to avoid overhangs, we need a very well-placed matrix band. Exactly. Doesn't matter what you are going to use. I think commonly you will use in this particular task a Toffelmeyer, which is okay. But you need to be sure that the Toffelmeyer is well adapted. Mm -hmm. And if you have any spaces between the Toffelmeyer or the band, and the proximal box, you need to put a wedge in order to close those, those spaces so you don't get any excess material flowing beyond the proximal box. That's quite important. And what helps as well, once you remove the uh, you can pass the floss actually once you feel it's not fully set but uh, a bit still consistent, like set, you can pass the floss and kind of wipe the floss against the area, the cervical area, so it can remove a bit the excess. That's, that's actually quite good advice as well. So overhangs, <coughs> ideally, if you don't have any overhangs present, you will be in very good. Yeah. And that's another point of the criteria that easily is easy to achieve very good. Yes. I mean, don't give away points. If you are talking about escorts in here, you don't give away points. points. Make sure that you adapt a lot your your uh, matrix and the Toffelmeyer and, and your wedges. wedges. Okay, next part of the, the criteria is damage to adjacent or assessment tooth. I mean, this is a quite easy criteria where you can go True. easily three points. Uh, so be mindful just when you do your and uh, your, I don't think that when we carve we can um, damage the adjacent teeth or uh, the tooth itself, but just be careful. I, I think with the damage to the gingiva, I think these are really easily points to get. Correct. You can get very good easily. I think, like Rada said, not too much opportunities to damage the adjacent or the assessment tooth. Damage to gingiva can only all occur with probably the, with the band. Matrix band, band. So be careful, yeah, be just aware. be gentle. 
Remember, don't rush your tasks because when we rush is when we make all of these mistakes. Yeah. So I think this uh, point of the criteria, you should be able to, to score very good in here. Yeah. Okay, now let's move to proximal contact, tightness and contour. Yeah. I like this one. <laughs> Because it's quite important, exactly. you know, because be able to reproduce a very good and anatomical uh, proximal contact point. Exactly. So, Rada just show you guys how to floss in order to check our contacts. So, if you see the mesial contact, when Rada showed it to you guys, it was shredding and it was too tight. Yeah. If we are going to test the distal contact, you will see that look nothing there because remember that we have that weird fracture there so immediately no contact so in one side this missile look how it struggles to get it there and when i take it it's very very hard and on the distal it's like nothing is happening mm -hmm. there very so loose. exactly so in one side missile too tight that's unsatisfactory guys and in the distal part that's absent, that's also unsatisfactory. If you revise the proximal contact tightness, you will see that borderline is says very tight or very tight. And if you cannot floss, that will be immediately unsatisfactory. So you need to find a way to fix that. How we can fix this uh, uh, like proximal part that we have a fractured uh, amalgam? I would say you just need to create a box so you remove part here yeah not all the amalgam not all the amalgam of course and then you place a matrix band they give you the choice of uh, uh, using sectional matrix or if you feel more comfortable with the Toffelmeyer and the whole matrix band it's also fine because I know that we are using it so yeah. much that we are so... Um, we are very confident. Uh, yes, we are very yeah, confident, ac customized to it. So whatever you feel comfortable with, place, wedge, and then you um, uh, place again and pack and condense your amalgam. Yeah. Then you carve and then you wait a little bit uh, so it, it sets slightly. So can uh, remove the matrix blend quite uh, safely and then you uh, just remove it and go on with the um, like the, the initial part of your uh, task. Correct. Remember when you place a Toffelmeyer in the band you can burnish your contact point in yeah. order for you to assure that you are going to get a contact point in there. So make sure that you burnish a little bit. Mm. That will be a very effective way to fix that fracture part there mm. or to fix Something that is not fractured, but it's absent the contact, exactly. you know? I did that in my exam with the amalgam because I got that tricky one of 1-4 that is very hard to gain yeah, the contact with the, with, with the canine. canine. So I did that. I just drilled the part that I thought needed to have the contact and I placed my band again and I mixed new amalgam and I fixed it. And fortunately, it was a pass. But you need to be able to strategize what you need to do to organize the things. Now, for the missile contact that is too tight, that's also something that you need to fix. Yeah. So I think we have a video on our Facebook page and also in the YouTube channel about how to fix a very tight contact. So what you need to do basically is to put a wedge in the missile part in this case in order to open your contact completely with the wedge. That's what I want to do. Open completely the contact. And then you can go with an interproximal strip yes. and then you polish a little bit remove the wedges Assess. and check yeah. if it is not tight or too tight still mm. up until you get to the point that you are happy with the contact that it is not too tight so remember there's ways to fix things and that's what we need to strategize when we are doing our exam and please always when you do something like uh, to fix the too tight proximal contact put the wedge polish it a bit, remove the wedge, check. Don't go, 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 and then, oh my God, I lost my proximal contact. Exactly. And this will be catastrophic because now you need to do a box and then you need to... Light catastrophic. Pod. Yes. Okay, Horrible. yes. Com I completely agree with Rada. Go slow, 
put the wedges, open the contact. Remember, you Take cannot go in there yeah. if the contact is not open. So you need to put a very thick wedge. Don't yeah. be afraid of that. Put it, open it and polish it slowly. That's quite important. And uh, what uh, Lina said just earlier uh, about the um, burnishing the contact point um, on the matrix band, even for the contact contour, because this will um, this will uh, uh, um, how do we say again condition the width and the height. Correct. So really be careful to place this uh, burnished point contact on the matrix band on the correct height, which will be usually about 1 mm below the marginal reach of the adjacent tooth and the width. So be mindful, not a big um, uh, area, but rather a point. And then again, if it's too wide, how you assess the, uh, the width? You take the floss, for instance, before moving on to then you can do like that. that. That's too broad. That's why it's so tight. That is too broad. Correct. And I feel as well that it's too low. It's too low, yeah. Yeah. So, see? Very tight. Very Correct. tight, low and broad. If it's wide, you can uh, use a polishing strip and maybe use the S technique so you can just um, reduce the width of your uh, proximal contact area. And remember guys, during the exam, you are going to have the contralateral tooth present. Yeah. If you, for any chance, have forgotten how broad a contact should be, go to the sure. contralateral area, floss that area, and try to eyeball it, you know, measure a little bit how that's going to, or needs to look, be, needs to look in order for you to recreate those things in the contact area that you have. Exactly. Okay, now, occlusal, occlusal anatomy. anatomy, important. I will say never, never attempt a restoration without analyzing what is it that you need to achieve. So if you know that you need to, like in this case, you need to build up again the mesiobocal cusp before attempting anything go to the contralateral area when you go to the contralateral area then you will see uh, how high your cusp must need must be how um, how uh, towards the occlusal or towards the vocal you need to be able to assess what is it that you need to do before you go and try to attempt those things, guys. I think that's very important. You need to see how much of the cusp you need to recreate so you can strategize. So I will recommend to just pause, take a look to the cavity, take a look to the contralateral tooth and try to establish what is it that you need to rebuild. So you can help also, normally you should be ready and you should know how to um, place for the central groove, uh, the ridge, the central ridge, your cusp and all that. But if you have any doubt, because this day can be stressful, we can, you know, be blunt sometime, just check the control lateral tooth. So we can, for instance, talk about this one. Here, for instance, if you can see, you normally we should have a, um, uh, a central ridge here. Here it's missing, okay? You need also, also to check uh, if the central uh, groove is well placed. Aligned with the other teeth. Exactly, so if we have this curve here. Uh, if we have a fossa, this kind to add these secondary, you know, fissures and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want the main uh, uh, fissures, grooves, uh, ridges, the main anatomy. Yeah. Okay, that it look like a, uh, a real tooth. A real tooth. That's it. Okay, Rada, we have a question for Priya. Priya is asking us, tell us more about S-shaped polishing. polishing. Yeah, 
Yes, I okay. will. I will show you uh, just after we go through all these uh, criteria, and then okay. we will show you. Okay, perfect, Priya. So just hang with us a little bit more. Thank you let's, for your patience. Yes, let's just finish the criteria. We are four points away from finishing the criteria. So you will see um, how the S-shaped polishing uh, is going to be. So the next point, or, okay guys, so coming back to what Rada just said, remember, we need to assess that our central group is well aligned with the adjacent teeth, that our marginal reach are at the same level of the adjacent teeth as well, and that we have a very good position of our cusp and a very good height. So you need to know your anatomy by memory. If you are going to forget something because you are too stressed or too um, nervous during the exam, just go to the contralateral tooth and assess what is it that um, you need to rebuild. That's pretty much what you need to have. The rest of the things are going to be in your hands, the way you carve. That's why it's so important for you to practice your carving so you know how to get to the result that you need to get. Now we are going to move to the lingual vocal tooth contours. And basically you will be very good if you maintain the original tooth contours. Again, guys, I think um, it's quite important um, that when you are trying to recreate the buccal contours, that's this thing that I always try to do, and it's if I'm carving, let's say, this buccal part, I try to carve from touching the surface of the sound tooth, or surface of the real tooth, and I carve towards this part in order. Okay, let me just focus it a little bit better there for you guys, and I will repeat it. Now, let's do it again. Sorry about that, guys. So what I'm doing is, I ha if this is my carpet, I imagine this is my carpet, I'm going to cut from the to the structure towards the amalgam because that way I'm going to follow the contour of the tooth, in this case, the vocal contour. So as you can see, it's easy to get very good. The only thing that you need to do is follow your tooth, basically. You. Exactly, that's the reference. If you do it from this area towards the tooth, you can create a deficiency in this area here because you are not following your reference. Or you can uh, um, depart, you can, uh, instead of having, for instance, we have this buckle groove usually here, you will get it here, which makes uh, your um, cusp, uh, the distaling, uh, distal buckle cusp, slightly smaller than it should be and this one bigger correct okay okay guys let me just put this model back again in position and we have uh, a couple of questions so do we need to check bite uh, do, uh, I, i'm sorry the name is quite quite long so i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing abderrahman ibrahim okay you can take care of that <laughs> so he is asking do we need to check bite and the hind point with articulating paper or no need mm -hmm. well in real life you will do it but the reality guys is that in the exam those models are not going to occlude so you are not going to get anything from there if you ask me that you need to simulate that i mean to be honest i didn't do it i didn't do, I it, didn't do it but your uh, occlusal anatomy should as we said look like the real one so if you see that your cusp or your ridge, the central ridge, or we'll go through the marginal ridge high, is too high or too low, this will help you to know if you have a supra or infra inclusion. Correct. So, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it uh, just in, in three criteria. Okay, so in just, to, just to answer the question, you are not going to get any high points if you articulate during yeah. the exam. That's the reality of it. So Pooja is asking, in building distal lingual cusp of lower first molar, do we have to consider mesolingual or second molar in relation to height? My answer will be check your contralateral tooth. In a contralateral tooth in the lower first molar, you are going to find that the, mesio, the distal lingual cusp is lower than the mesolingual yeah. by very little, to be honest, yes. but it's lower. Yes. So what you want to do is to check your contralateral tooth and that's what you need to do. 
I will say 0 0.5 lower than yes. the mesial vocal cost, yeah, mesial lingual cost. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what do you think, Rada? Yeah, yeah, yeah? You're, you're correct. So I, I want uh, compare to the to the if we are doing the first molar, I won't compare with the second molar, correct? But rather with the cusp of the tooth, that is uh, the sound cusp. On the up, yeah. So if I'm building the mesial uh, buccal cusp. I will make it slightly higher than the distal buccal cusp by max 0.5 mm and, uh, and vice versa. If I'm doing the distal uh, buccal cusp, it will be slightly lower than the mesial buccal uh, one. So I won't compare to the second molar if I'm doing the first molar, yes. but rather the Control lateral tooth. Yeah, control lateral tooth, or the um, I compare with the uh, same tooth. Correct. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. So we are getting questions, which is good. So I'm guessing everyone is with us, right? All, all here, yeah, because we are almost finished through the criteria. We have talked about the cusp height already. Yeah. And the lingual and vocal contours. Now, cusp position. Yeah. So cusp position. So what I used to, how I assess it first, I assess it, you can assess with the other tooth. So, so for instance, the uh, first molar will have the mesial buccal cusp that is more uh, um, mesially uh, placed. But if you check for this, the seven, it will be closer uh, the distal buccal cusp. So here it is like an aim shape, but the two parts are quite closer. And if it's uh, the first molar, let's take this example, even though it's in endotooth, the uh, mesial cusp will be more mesially placed than uh, the seven. So the mesial cusp for seven should be closer to the uh, distal, distal cusp. And also you can always assess with the uh, palatal one through the palatal one. So this is how I usually yeah. assess and place my cusp. Yeah, that's, that's quite good. I like this. And that, what Drada just said is just the example that you need to know your anatomy exactly. by memory, by heart. Yeah. So that's pretty much what you need. And remember, guys, you are going to have the, the example, the contralateral tooth over there. I mean, you if you panicked, you just go take a, a, a deep breath and look for the contralateral tooth to you, so you can assess all the things that Rada just said. Okay, guys, coming to the end, the last point of the criteria is the marginal reach height. Mm -hmm. So the marginal reach height, uh, it should be uh, the same height as the the adjacent teeth, sorry. So if it's higher, then you need to carve and reduce. And don't forget as well to have a slight occlusal embrasure, okay? Don't damage your contact point. Little uh, occlusal embrasure and round here to have a nice rounded yeah. marginal ridge, same height as the At adjacent the teeth. teeth. Yeah, and that's quite important because remember that we mentioned uh, earlier at the beginning of the assessment that uh, we need to think about the clinical outcome if this was a real patient. So if the marginal reach is too high, that's going to create not only a high point, but also it's going to create a stress area for the restoration and probably the restoration is going to be fractured. If the marginal reach is too low, the plaque accumulation is also going to be there, which is which can lead, oh, sorry, we can uh, lead uh, to secondary decay, and that's yeah. something that we don't want. So that's the rationale Changing behind all of these things. And uh, yeah, I think that's all about the criteria. Now, yes, um, now for Pooja. in order for Priya, ah, Priya, sorry, for Priya, let's let's see about the S shape polishing. So let's say I want to do this one. Okay, so they in the your exam day, you would use a tweezer yeah. to pass it. So look what there, guys. 
That's very efficient to polish overhangs because you are going to be immediately below the contact area. What she has done is to take uh, interproximal finishing strip and basically we cut that interproximal finishing strip in half. So we have a very narrow and, and thin proximal strip. We are going to slide that below the contact point and then we are going to simulate the S-shaped movement in order to get rid of any possible overhangs. Now guys, this is very effective to polish the overhangs if your overhangs are minimal. If you have a massive overhang, you can stay the entire day over there trying to polish it, it's not going to happen. So you need to be able also to analyze the overhang if that's present to see if that's something that you can easily fix with that technique that we just show you or if definitely it's too big that not even the interproximal street is going to get rid of that. All right. Okay, if guys. You have any questions, guys? Thank you so much for bearing with us. If you like to discuss uh, any other topics um, for the upcoming um, lives, episodes. episodes of Lina and Radha's show, please feel free to leave a comment and we'll be very happy to, um, to take that into account. Okay, so Rana is asking, always miss your vocal cusp is higher than this to vocal cusp in this upper or lower molar teeth? Yes. Correct. Yes. That's correct. Thank you, Jessica, Vinita. No, you're welcome. No worries, Hope it was Priya. Helpful. And please, uh, as we just said, leave us comments if you want any other topics. We have uh, uh, already a topic for next uh, show, but if you are happy, uh, if you need to talk about something um, that you're struggling or uh, you have some doubts, feel free to leave us these comments and we'll be very happy to, to treat that next time. Yeah in the first uh, Facebook like that we had um, two weeks ago. The idea is that this can be a very relaxed space. So we are open to hear about suggestions of topics that you guys want to discuss. Um, so just let us know, you know, put your comments below or you can message Dental 101 and we can get the, a discussion about the topics and hopefully we can, you know, fulfill your needs. That's the most important thing. We are just here to help you. Yeah, Can definitely. Can you please share a video or a step-by-step -step procedure for complex res composite restoration on premolar? Oh, Benita. Well, you are pretty much asking about a demo. I don't know how much detail you will get, you know, like on a video. Uh, but we have quite a few videos um, on our Facebook page and also in the YouTube channel regarding uh, several tasks. But if you definitely want to have like a formal demo, a step by step, you should contact um, the institute to see how can arrange some something for you. Definitely, you can contact Kanika. She'll be very uh, happy to help you. Yep, definitely. All right, we are happy to have you again today. We hope we see you in two weeks. Yes, and uh, we wish you a very good evening or day, uh, depending where you are. Yeah, in the, the world. <laughs> which time zone you guys are. So, um, yeah, let's see uh, you next time. And uh, we were very happy again to see yes, you. Definitely. So, this is very fun, guys. Yeah. Thank you for bearing with us. You let us know as well what is it that you think about this whole strategy of trying to show you a couple of technical things on video. Now for you, and then we can improve uh, also if we need to improve anything else. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.